I, I got to mention, yesterday I saw a picture on a friend's Facebook page. Uh, she lives in the area, Glens Ferry, Mount Home, and it was uh, the pumpkins from her garden. And she's got a lot of pumpkins, and she was commenting that she loves this time of year, the harvest season. And a couple of days before that, she had a photograph of all of the onions uh, that she's collected on her farm. And I think that she's uh, she's growing more of those than you do necessarily over the uh, Yakima Valley. Uh, and at this time of year, we start thinking about that harvest season and the like. And in some parts of the world, uh, it is an enormous celebration. And a lot of those people from the old countries brought it over to the new country when they arrived in North America. We're joined this morning in studio by Ray Parrish. First of all, welcome back. Good morning, Bill. Thanks for having me. Uh, and we're not talking uh-huh. about banking issues today. It's a little lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really good. Yes. And he's here representing the Kiwanis Club, as he does on a yearly basis, because we're talking about something called the October Feast. Correct. This is a big, big event in Twin Falls. It is. It, it's the biggest event we have every year. The, the ironic part is, uh, the last couple of years, we've come right on the heels of October Fest, which is the downtown merchants deal. <laughs> So don't get those confused out there, folks. Uh, the October <laughs> Feast is the Kiwanis Annual German Dinner, and it comes on October 12th. Uh, that's a Wednesday, right after the city's October Fest downtown. And, you know, you were telling me about this last year. I mean, this is this is a, a, a massive event. I mean, there's people working not only in the building, but they're working out back, and it uh, it's at the Turf Club, and it takes up a, a, a lot of space, and it lasts for hours. Yeah, we start at 4.30. We try and get seniors in from 4.30 to 6. They get a little reduced rate on that if they come in. Uh, they get in for $9. And then uh, we have uh, tickets for families. We have tickets uh, that corporate people can pick up, uh, get a packet of tickets. Uh, the uh, price is, uh, I correct me on that, it's $9 for an adult on a regular deal. It's uh, I believe it's $7 uh, for seniors if they come in between 4.30 and 6.00. So it's just a little little less for seniors if they come in early. People, uh, people, when you know we talk about ethnic food, you often think about the Polish with pierogies and uh, the Italians with a lot of the good pastas, and uh, we especially in this area we have good Basque food and Portuguese food. German food though has its own very unique style. It does. Uh, Falls Brand, our local uh, meat packer here, does a phenomenal job on brats. Uh, they've got some of the best brats I've had since I've been out of Germany. And so we feature those brats on that Wednesday night. Uh, we have a, a rolled cold dish, which is a red cabbage dish. Uh, it's a, a again, all these recipes come from Germany that we have that night, and it's a special one that has uh, apples in it. Uh, it's got a little clove flavor to it, so it's a it's a really unique dish. Uh, we have sauerkraut, which you know most kids or people when they think about sauerkraut, they think back to their uh, grade school days with sauerkrauts <laughs> on Friday and go, oh, no. but this is a really unique one where we have pineapple in it. We have a little anise to give it a little, or caraway to give it a little uh, flavor. It's It's got brown sugar in it, so it's not a sour sauerkraut. It's a really flavorful sauerkraut. You know, when, when, when you mentioned Falls Brand, too, and this is a company that's won national awards for its products. So you're going to be sitting down and eating some of the juiciest stuff in the country. And we, we uh, grill the brats. So uh, when you get there, they're grilled that night. Uh, you get to smell them as you come in. And... Uh, we do it from 4.30 until 8 o'clock at the Turf on, on Wednesday, October 12th. So you're giving people a couple of weeks of uh, leeway with notice with all of this. Right. We want to make sure that they hold that Wednesday night open. Now, it, it, for people who are looking for tickets, obviously they're available. Number one, maybe if they drop by the bank at D11s, I, I, uh, you'd have something available? Correct. I've got tickets at D11s if they want to swing by there. Uh, they can pick them up at the door. Uh, there's no price variance between getting them earlier, getting them at the door. Um, like I said, we have corporate packages. If any businesses are looking, uh, they can get their name on the banner that we have there that evening and get 10 tickets for $110. So it's a pretty good deal. When people, uh, we talk about this, uh, they've got to remember when you mentioned Kiwanis, you're talking about service. And so there's this, this, is, this is done for fun, obviously, but it's done for much more than just fun. Correct. This is our main fundraiser for all of our youth activities that we do, all the things that we support with Boys, Boys Club and Girls Club and and uh, our key club that are at uh, all three high schools, uh, Kimberly Twin Falls and Canyon Ridge. Uh, we have uh, uh, music scholarship things that we do. We have actual college scholarships that, that we do with this money bill. And so it's it's our main fundraiser for these youth activities. In the in the past years, I would assume you've drawn hundreds and hundreds of people for this event. We cook up 1,300 brats <laughs> that night. 
And uh, we range between 600 and 800 people every year. It gets a little bit better every year. Uh, years past, we used to have a, a German band that came in that was really fun, but uh, it disbanded because some of the members passed away and they just couldn't get it put together anymore. And, and we really miss that. But we have uh, CDs that I've picked up while I've been in Germany that have beer hall music and, and whatnot. Uh, my fellow Kiwanians get mad at me because <laughs> if you've ever been to Germany during Oktoberfest, and uh, walk into a beer hall. It is not a quiet place. Yeah, I remember seeing some some films on this, and there's like when you put sometimes hundreds to a thousand people in a big room, and these are massive rooms, as I understand it. They are. There's that buzz that just kind of takes over the room. It, I mean, they're as big as a, a cathedral, and uh, you get in there, and they have table upon table upon table, and the steins that they serve the beer in are between a quart and a quart and a half each. And uh, it gets pretty raucous, but uh, they have beer barrel bands that really pump out the music. And I've got those songs that uh, I've got on a CD that plays probably an hour, hour and 15 minutes worth very of music. Very upbeat music, too. Oh, yeah, very upbeat. I mean, it, it keeps you going. So it, it's a fun time. I, you know, I've, we've been doing this for over 15 years, and uh, more and more people come, and, and they just really like that very happy festive out, you know, uh, atmosphere. We have the uh, youth from the key clubs at Kimberly, uh, Twin Falls High, and, and Canyon Ridge. That they're your servers, so uh, we the kids get into it. Uh, virtually every member of Kiwanis has a duty to perform that night, whether it's washing dishes, uh, plating food, cooking brats in the back, uh, being a maitre d. Uh, we just have everybody participates. It's just a really fun evening. I know my dad told me that after the war, that in a lot of these beer halls in Germany, uh, that he saw. Uh, that a lot of them used to have right, right attached, but you know, behind the building would have a great big pen filled with like pigs. And he said, in many cases, this was where the, the food went directly from the backyard to the kitchen to the table. Uh, I mean, obviously, having Falls Brand right here in town too, it's pretty close to having something like that. But it, 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 that that culture is 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 really one of, I don't know, call it self sufficiency. They, they they it just it, it developed in a sense that. Very communal, too, as well, with the size of these halls. And that's the key to this whole thing. It's, our event is a community event. It celebrates the harvest season that we made it through another year, and we've got some good crops out there. And, boy, this year we've got some nice crops out there. This last rainstorm last week didn't help some of them. But, <laughs> but by and large, we've had a good year, and it brings the whole community together for just a really fun celebration. And, uh, you know, the thing about the uh, – you know, I, I, I've never actually, I think the closest time, thing I've seen to this music live, I used to live near a Budweiser brewery many, many years ago, about 20 miles away, and they would throw, is their community event, uh, you know, their public relations outreach, they would do one of these things, and it was huge, and they would bring in these bands, and um, they would wear the traditional costumes, which you're sporting a bit of today. <laughs> I, I am a little bit. This is my... Uh, Grill in the back of the turf club outfit, <laughs> and uh, I actually picked uh, picked the hat up in Austria and the the little uh, lederhosen outfit uh, in Heidelberg, Germany. Did you make it to Salzburg? Yes. Oh, that's like number one on my oh. bucket list. Yeah, and there's it is a fabulous place to be. I mean, it's in fact I'm headed there next spring <laughs> again. <laughs> so, yeah, it's 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 a good place to be. I had an old girlfriend, and her last name was Knitzer. And uh, and I used to want to go visit all of these places, and she just looked at me and said, "What for?" But you know, I it just some people don't have that uh, that sort of uh, you know wanderlust. I guess is a good way to put that. Yeah, no. I in fact, I had a, a, a good client that uh, just got back from from a motorbike trip. He and his wife went on a motorbike trip from uh, through Austria, northern Italy, uh, Czechoslovakia, and Switzerland, and they said they had a ball. They just got back and. See, I could do that as a job. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I did 40 weeks a year, that would be just about right. And maybe I could come back and do talk radio for another 12. I think I'd be in just a, That's a perfect balance. Pretty good ratio. Yeah. <laughs> hey, while you're here today, um, we've got a couple of minutes before we wrap up. A good friend of yours is uh, is retiring. Uh, Wiley Dobbs made the announcement that he's going to be retiring from uh, his uh, post as uh, where he's he's been there for a long in this day and age school superintendents generally it's like a carousel, but he's been there for nearly 15 years here yeah. in Twin Falls. Uh, it, 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 this is a, a he made a joke during the meeting that 
that he spent his entire life really in the school system, going to school there first of all, and then teaching and working his way up. Uh, obviously, they'll they'll find good people to replace him or a good person, um, but it's still big shoes to fill. Huge fill, huge shoes. Uh, yeah, Wiley. I think outside of the the four years he was off getting his degree, he's been in Twin Falls School District from student to uh, the head of the the Magic Valley High, the, the Larry Junior High. Uh, superintendent, you know, assistant superintendent, but he has done a phenomenal job in Twin Falls. The the, the city owes him a great deal, uh, simply for the fact that he has really worked hard in some pretty scary times. I mean, he came in in 2003, and then we turned around and had the recession, and the state cut back our funding, and and he was working just as hard as he could with the board and and some outside groups uh, of citizens in Twin Falls to make sure that we had enough money and enough. Uh, collaborative interest to keep the education system in Twin Falls at its very peak, and he needs a lot of credit for that. People don't understand this, but I, I, my formative years in broadcasting were spent in Syracuse, New York, which is about three times the size of Twin Falls, but the school systems size-wise are almost identical. So he is running in a smaller city, a big city school district, and I don't think a lot of people are even aware of that. I think you're right. And it's uh, he's done a phenomenal job. I mean, uh, I'm born and raised in Twin Falls myself, and when I look at how this city has expanded, and we look at the, you know, it's not that we want new schools just to have new schools. It's that we needed schools in order to keep the student ratios where they should be. And so he has worked very diligently and worked hard uh, with the citizens of this town to be able to get funding through bonds to get the new schools that we need. And, you know, to our benefit, Twin Falls is growing. And that's, I think, a great thing for us. But short term, you get growing pains. And he's been able to work through those growing pains very well. Yeah, I was going to say, it, uh, we've got about 30 seconds, but managing growth is, is sometimes one of the most difficult jobs any administrator has. Oh, it, it is, definitely. And, and you've got, along with that, not only the, the structural growth, but then the employee growth, which is also problematic. Well, again, big shoes to fill. Uh, they will find someone, I'm sure, and uh, they'll do a good long search here. Good having you come by today. And again, it's October 12th, the October Feast, and uh, at the Turf Club. In fact, that's that's your yearly address for the event. Correct. It's always at the Turf, and it's always usually one of the first two or three Wednesdays in, in October. We do want to point out tickets available at the door, but if you want to pick up tickets in advance, many locations, including DL Evans Bank. Correct. I want to thank you for stopping by today. Thank you so much, Bill. All right, talk to you sometime soon, maybe that night. I'm Adrian Zane. I'm going to be away for a couple of days. My birthday's the 10th, so I'll be away for a couple of days in uh, Jackson Hole, but I'll be back that Wednesday, and likely I'll have a big feedback on. <laughs> All right, thank you much. Thank you. We're coming up on 20 minutes after 9 o'clock, and right now it's 59. We've got more of Top Story coming up.